I first got a chance to interview Chris from Aptera uh, last year at Fully Charged in San Diego. We had a great time. It was the big unveiling of the Gamma, and boy, was it a showstopper. And I had another chance to talk with them at the California Takeover just a few months back, but it turns out there's still a lot of questions you guys have. So by popular request, uh, he's back. He's back for another round. Uh, I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. Chris, so good of you to take some time out of your busy schedule. Thank you for that. Thanks, Brian. It's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. So let's just get right into it. Last time we talked, you had just uh, sent off the body for the aero testing. How did it go? Uh, it went pretty good. You know, we uh, kind of got last minute access to, um, you know, a wind tunnel that was designed by Roberto Morelli. And um, he is really the uh, inventor of the cambered body that we ended up with. You know, when, when Steve first started conceiving of the idea of this vehicle, we started doing aerodynamic research. There's a lot of book work, you know, trying to figure out, okay, the solar car racing teams are doing this. Really, what's the most practical thing that we could put on the road? And it really was this cambered body. You know, we could we could get a lot of space out of it. We could get the wheels outboard so we could keep the, the, the body really streamlined. But putting a hump in the back, you know, was really Roberto Morelli's idea. And he had a vehicle called the Aztec back in the day that was a solar racer. And uh, it was through our research where we said, that that's it. You know, that's what we want to model out and put in the wind tunnel the, the virtual wind tunnel um and see you know how it really works so so he was the basis for the modern aptera and he designed uh this wind tunnel in italy at pen and farina that we got to go use and it was just awesome to get some time but we didn't get a lot of time <laughs> we got like an afternoon um so you know we we got the vehicle in we, we you know we got it all set up uh, we got some you know meaningful test out but it wasn't kind of the full complement of test you really do uh, to fully vet out a vehicle so we said you know look when we have our full production vehicle we'll come back now we know how to set it up so it'll be a lot quicker uh, and we'll get more aerodynamic you know results then so the question is is the shape correct it doesn't have too much up force or down force it's not gonna get squirrely at at 80 or 90 miles an hour so far so good right yeah, you know, one of the most interesting things was uh, we thought there, that the um, aero drag would go way up with yaw. So if you were like going into a crosswind, we thought it'd be significantly more drag. That's kind of what the um, simulation showed us when we just turned the vehicle in the simulation. But in the wind tunnel, it didn't really seem to be that way. It was actually less aero at a slight angle. So uh, I think that's positive information overall. So you know, um, you know, the, the more complex the study, maybe the more the computer has trouble spitting out the exact right results. So it's cool to see it in real life. So I've been following your news releases and uh, all, all the updates on your website. And I noticed that uh, you've got some, some of the pieces are indeed taking shape moving forward. Um, you've got the first panels stamped. You've got the stamping stuff f sorted. What's going on there? Yeah, you know, I think one of the most significant developments over the last year is that we committed to production tooling in this new body method, carbon fiber SMC um, sheet molding compound, it's the SMC part, uh, with a company called CPC in Italy. Um, they're, you know, the go-to place for composite parts, um, you know, for all these supercars that you see coming out of uh, Modena, Italy. So. Um, you know, it was amazing that we were able to form the relationship and more amazing that, you know, supercars, eh, I want to work on this Aptera thing. You know, this is, this is, you know, new automotive. This is where the interesting engineering is happening. So we got a lot of support. Um, and I, I, I thought it was very humbling, uh, to go to the Mecca of supercars, but have people, you know, wanting to work on our project. Um, and we, uh, we committed because we got such good support, we committed a lot of cash, <laughs> a lot of capital to the tooling there, you know, 16 months ago, because just getting the steel blocks, um, you know, out of Germany, 8,000 pound steel blocks took like a year. Um, wow. so, you know, the lead time on the stuff was immense. We had to commit really early. It was a lot of capital. We'd have loved to have kept that money in the bank for a lot of reasons, uh, including interest rates being high and being able to make money on that money. But you know, you got to deploy capital to keep the program going, and that's what we did. And now we're actually producing production parts, not validation parts, not we're going to test these parts, not oh the design's going to change parts, not you know oh this is um, kind of um, low volume tooling. This is the high volume tooling that we can produce 100,000 parts of uh, out of a year, um, and we're producing parts that have been you know um, 
measured by the coordinate measurement machine and validated that they are the correct, you know, intent production parts. And, you know, we've already produced more than a dozen, you know, parts for each part of the vehicle. Completed about 60% of the body structure, um, probably about 60% of the other parts, the, you know, uh, doors, closures, rear hatch, uh, that sort of stuff. So it's just really cool to see stuff we've been working on for a couple years now come to life. And now you can actually touch and feel the part. You can see how it all comes together. And, you know, a couple more months will be all done with all that tooling. And it'll just be a matter of aligning the rest of the supply chain to start building vehicles. So that means uh, at the glass, how are we doing on finalizing the glass? Oh, actually, the glass was one of the very first things we released. So, it, you know, once once we had the um, the exterior shape locked uh, and the closure, so you kind of you kind of build a lot of things from the doors in. Uh, the doors need to be very specifically hinged, and the seals and the way they latch. Uh, so you kind of once you choose that shut face line, the primary seal P1 line, you kind of design everything in from that. So um, the doors are set, the glass was set. That was that's got to be over a year now that we've had the glass finalized so so that's the easy part the seals took a little longer because you make the profile of the seal but then you have to have a vendor that can build that specific type of seal with the durometer of rubber that you want for that seal so you know it wasn't until we found that supplier that we could actually lock down that that seal um, but you know yeah closures you know roush helped us design the closures they've designed some of the highest volume closure systems you know in the world um, and, you know, CPC helped us refine them for this carbon fiber SMC. And so, so doors, closures, seals, glass, uh, all that stuff is, is way behind us. And the solar glass, I saw it was already at design intent. Uh, is it working? Yeah, we had, uh, you know, we, we obviously put the most intellectual property, you know, work into our solar uh, packages. Um, you know, we've done a lot of material science. Um, you know, we've been validating, you know, different uh, panel makeups for probably over a year now, too. Um, you know, the, the solar was kind of always the furthest along, closest to production. So, yeah, you know, we've been producing production panels for over six months. Um, you know, but we did change the shape some um, as we started to finish up. Uh, the rear hatch was the one that changed the most because the piece mm. of glass is so big. We actually kind of took the corners off and we're going to have like a filler piece. Um, mm -hmm. it, it'll look, you know, the same, but, uh, uh, getting a machine to build glass that big was, was a challenge. Uh, but yeah, we've been, we've been building them. We got, uh, we got samples back from our glass company for the final configuration probably four months ago. Um, and they, they just look beautiful. It's so cool to see kind of the, the evolution from some of the stuff we built for gamma, um, and even beta. Um, you know, it didn't quite have the scratch resistance, the durability that we wanted, didn't have the luster, didn't look as pretty. Uh, now we've actually found a lighter way to do it um, that is much tougher and much more resilient, stands up to 90 mile an hour hail balls and, you know, all the UV you want to throw at it. So, you know, feel like we're in a good place with the solar. And so uh, I know it was, I think it was Sandy who was saying that we might see a production body in three months. That was what, a month or two ago? Um, is that is that still on pace or did I read that wrong? Yeah, I mean, uh, we shipped Sandy out to CPC to visit and, you know, um, kind of sort through how they're going to build the body for us. Uh, Sandy's been a proponent from the beginning and an investor in Uptera. You know, he wants us to be the most manufacturable vehicle ever. And when we first started talking to him about this, you know, carbon fiber SMC method, he said, that's perfect. You know, that, that's where you want to be, you know, a, an infinitely tolerant uh, body that when you bond it together, it doesn't move at all. You know, that's going to help you have perfect closures. Um, that's going to help you, you know, with the tolerant stack up between the body panels like this. This is how you make, you know, supreme quality out of 100,000 vehicles a year. So, um, you know, he he was in it. But I think when he went to Italy, he was like, oh, these guys are almost done with tooling. So they'll be done in a couple months. Um, Great. You know, it was it was uh, quite a bit more involved, you know, with the logistics of getting those tools made. In America, we ship stuff really quick, and a lot of the guys in Detroit can really move stuff quick. In Europe, not as quick. So mm. it uh, maybe didn't happen as quick as Sandy had it in his head after he took his trip to Italy, but uh, it's, it's come along quite nicely. So what isn't finalized? Um, you know, Jason just got back from a trip to Italy where we were finalizing some of the interior elements uh, the visor was the last thing that I that I think they were working on in the, on the interior. Um, 
we kind of finished the base for the modular center console, uh, but we haven't designed the kind of three pieces that go on it yet. All that stuff's pretty quick tooling, so we don't really need to design that stuff yet. Um, the uh, the front wheel pans have gone through considerable design iterations. The tooling's pretty quick because it's not that big a part, uh, so we haven't really pushed to finish that. But those are kind of the two areas visually um, that haven't been really locked down. Um, our thermal system is probably the only real integrated system that I think we're still working on. We, we changed the way we're cooling our battery modules um, to get better flow rates between the modules, and that changed our thermal system. Roush had already designed the thermal system like nine months ago, but then we went and changed it because we thought that it would be better for the battery modules to do it this way. And uh, so now we're like re-specifying the pump size of how much it needs to flow and stuff. So that's kind of the last kind of engineering system thing. The I last think. big one. Yeah. So that brings us to the to the big question. And I got I got an earful of this in the comments on our last video, which was the hill. There was that NBC video uh, where going up a hill, it overheated. Now I've seen videos uh, of the car since then going up the hill successfully. So uh, it sounds like you're working to you're aware of the problem and you're increasing the flow around it? Yeah, the, um, the motors that we put into Gamma that you saw it fully charged, um, we just filled those motors with coolant and capped them off. We didn't actually mm. put, a, a, we didn't actually have any kind of pump cooling those mm. off. And to be honest, because there's, because the motors are so big, because they're in-wheel motors, just putting the coolant in them is good for like 90% of the times you would drive it. It just it has a lot of thermal mass. Once you get driving, you, you get some convection cooling. So, you know, we, we drove the piss out of it for six months. <laughs> but, you know, the weather got hot here in San Diego, and it just so happened that the time where these, these news guys came to take it for a ride, it was a hot-ass day. And they were like, oh, we've got these drones. We want to shoot this heel, hill. And we were like, oh, shit. Okay, well, you know, let's try to make the best of it. And we tried to do it, and it just overheated. <laughs> That's just... That's how it was. We were like, you know, 10 degrees over the threshold. And the problem is with those motors, because they have so much thermal mass, it, they can suck up a lot of heat. But also, once they have the heat, they can't get rid of it so easily. So, you know, it, it's because of the thermal mass, once you go 10 degrees over where you're supposed to be, it takes a while to get it out. So we've at, we just we added the pumps that we meant to add, you know, months and months ago. And now sure. it's just fine. So I said, you know, go out and shoot some video going up the steepest hill we can find around here do it 10 times and you know on a hot day if that works then i think we're good so so what we i hear you saying it. is what we knew all along is this was a gam this wasn't a production candidate yeah. or a release candidate this we're not even design locked a year ago when this was was shown off and there are design elements that don't need to be in the gamma to get the testing done for that part of it and so that at the actual cooling loop wasn't uh even in use so yeah. is that is that correct? Yeah, I mean, Gamma was not a validation or test vehicle. Right. Gamma was a pretty vehicle to show what Eptera is all about visually, and you can get in and right. it's comfortable. Uh, the you know the the other vehicles that we have for testing, those were to test the thermal system and stuff. And to be honest, the Gamma design was done you know 18 months ago. Then it took us six months to build it, and then we showed it off at fully charged, and, and now here we are. So you know that that design is 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 legacy <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Um, the thermal system changed a lot since. You know, we, sure. we built and locked that vehicle. So, um, you know, it's it's one of those things we I, I think we kind of pride ourselves on being extremely open. And if somebody wants to come and give us some press and we can express we can spread the idea of solar mobility like, yeah, we, we want to do that. So we probably leaned in a little too hard, going too aggressive with the news guys. And we should have just told them, like, no, we're not going to do this hill on this hot ass day. Like, we're just going to do it on some flat place. But. We try to be accommodating and open as possible, and sometimes it bites you. So what I heard you say is it is design locked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, because that was another question that was in there. Uh, so the uh, once you get, if you get that, uh, all, all your all your pieces, your, you know, your candidate in in the next couple months, how soon would you expect to start crash testing it in real life? Um, 
you know, I, we're still in the funding dependent realm, <laughs> right? Um, if we if we had and, and some of those conversations are growing really well, and I've seen a lot of kind of traction in the last couple months, which which I find interesting. Um, you know, the, the markets uh, still haven't really healed, um, but you know, the, um, you know, six months ago it was difficult conversations, and now it's gotten much easier. Um, so you know, even though we're funding dependent, you know, I, I think end of Q1 beginning of Q2 is when we'll start putting stuff into walls. Okay. Now here's some easy ones for you. The width of it for the European market. Is it too wide? Um, yeah, it's definitely not too wide. There, there are plenty of delivery trucks and, you know, sedans over there that are just as wide as the Aptera. So, you know, I, I don't think it's too wide for European roads. Uh, but regulation wise, uh, they don't like calling it a motorcycle over there when it's this wide. So we may have to homologate the vehicle, you know, in a different way um, in Europe than we do here. We have pretty liberal um, classifications for motorcycle, auto cycle here uh, in Europe. They do not. Um, so, you know, we, we think we may homologate in, uh, in countries outside of the EU, and that may make it easier to get into the EU. Uh, but we have some consultants working on that problem, and, you know, it's one of those things we'll take in due course. And that is one for due course, because today is not the day to worry about that. Uh, there are plenty of buyers eager to get their hands on one. Uh, you said next summer, right? Next summer, yeah. I mean, that's Okay, we are reiterating uh, early initial deliveries next summer. Very cool. Might be uh, late summer. Next summer. Yeah, late summer. <laughs> it's San Diego. It's never su it's summer. Oh, yeah. never San Diego ends. summer lasts until like January. So not not San Diego summer, general summer. Right, right. So uh, I've got some more pretty fun questions for you, but we're going to we've gone long enough on this. We'll go ahead and uh, do a part two for this uh, for all you folks uh, so we don't go too crazy. And the second part's going to be a lot more fun, I promise. Uh, but what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it in them comments below because it's the only way we know how to get smarter. For everybody else, you know, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.